what's up guys and welcome back to our Canucks GM mode in uh, NHL 17 so I know I haven't made an episode in like over a week sorry about that it's just because I've been working all these sense playoff games and it's been getting a little busy with work for a bit so um if the Sens do lose though in game seven I shouldn't have that much shifts for a couple weeks or so so I will be making more videos then if I have the time to um, anyways, in the last episode of our Canucks GM mode, we basically had the free agency and we started the season simulation. Uh, we simmed our first 21 games. As you can see, our record is nice, 14-5-2. And, and we're currently the best team in our division, which is also very good. Um, in free agency, we signed um, the big one being Roman Yossi. We also, I think, signed some depth players. I can't even remember, to be honest, because, like I said, I haven't made an episode in a week. Um, oh, yeah, we also... Where was it? I think we put... Didn't we get some depth guys? Oh, yeah, Kristoff Virtue was one of them. And I think that might have been it. But anyways, that's basically what happened in the last episode. And this episode, we're just going to be basically... I'm saying basically a lot, but we're zooming up to the trade deadline, and then we're going to show you guys what's available, and you guys can let me know who you want me to trade for if we need to tra make any trades, because we might have a good record like this still. Um, also, I was doing a little information I was looking for, and basically our team does have only two years left to win the cup, because um, we have seven contracts that end in the end of the season, which is Jake Furtanen, he's going to probably want to upgrade. Um, Anthony Mantha, we could probably release. Um, then Chris Wyman and Owen Tippett, both those guys are still in their minor league deals. So they're going to want an increase to maybe like 2 3 mil. Um, then Zach Sanford wants something, but I don't know if we want to get Sanford back. Maybe we get Sanford back instead of Mantha. And then Christoph Berchi also is just a depth guy. And Roman Yossi's contract also ends because we only signed him on a one-year deal. And then in two years, it's crazy because we have nine contracts that end. So basically, once that season hits, we're probably done for and we might have to go back into a rebuilding stage. Um, because Evander Kane, Kevin Fiala, Jacob Verana, Cole Castles, Oli Olivi, um, Shea Theodore, I almost said Jose Theodore, um, Troy Stetcher, Guillaume Breezeball, and Vasilevsky. All those guys, their contract ends, and if they all want like 6 mil each, you're looking at a shit ton of money, probably like $36 million just on those guys, so, um, and then after that, the year after that, we'll see, in three years, we have one contract that ends, and that's Nolan Patrick, so, Nolan Patrick at least is here for a couple of years, I don't know if we'll be able to necessarily keep him on the team the entire time. If we have better prospects, maybe we don't even keep him. Um, then in four years, Thatcher Demko's contract ends. He might want an upgrade, I don't know, because he hasn't grown in overall wise since. But if we win a Stanley Cup, he might want an upgrade. And then two contracts end in six years, and that's uh, Bo Horvat and Timothy Liljegren as well. Horvat had locked up on a long term big money deal. Well, Lil Chagrin and I only signed for like 1.175 mil, I think, for each season. So, he's not making a whole lot, and he could still grow. So, anyways, that's basically that. Um, I was also looking at what each line was doing individually for us, stuff like that. Um, so, basically, our first line, it, it told their um, goals, for, or their points so far in the first 21 games is 45 points, which is pretty solid 17 goals 28 assists then you go to our second line they're making 32 points um they had actually 12 goals and 20 assists and then our third line almost has as much goals as our second line as they had 11 goals 13 assists for 24 points and our fourth line actually was the third best producing line in those 21 games as they had 28 points in those 21 games is uh, leading the way, I believe, was Zach Sanford. He had like six goals, six assists, or three goals, three assists, something like that. Um, defensively, though, what was I going to say? Defensively, our first defensive pairing, uh, 26 points. And then second defensive pairing, 15 points. 
their defensive pairing, 11 points. Um, none of those coming from Guillaume Brisebois. Um, also, I was looking at the salary for each like line and stuff like that. So our first line's making just over, just around 18 million dollars. Our second line's only making 13 million dollars currently, and it's an average age of 24 years old. So those guys are pretty much the future. The first line is a bit of an older line, as their average age is 27. Then our third line's average age is only 23, and um, and they're making uh, around four million dollars because most of that is from Anthony Mantha. Um, but however, if uh, well at the end of the season, we're gonna have to be giving like a mil or 1.5 or two mil for uh, Chris Wyman probably, and then maybe a bit more for Owen Tippett if he grows. Um, and line four is making actually a lot of money. They're making almost seven million dollars. So. Um, I don't know if we want to keep like Sack Sanford because like for the fourth line paying that much money is a little ridiculous. So, um, also the line that takes the most penalties is our first line currently and our third line. So I don't know who it is if it's Nolan Patrick or what, but our old well, Nolan Patrick's on the second line. So I think most of it was Bo Horvat if I remember correctly. I don't I just don't know why he's taking so much penalties. But other than that, that's just a little information thing I was looking at last episode, so, or after last episode, um, so anyways, I guess let's just continue with the simulation, and then we will check the player stats after two months or something, yeah, we'll go to February 1st and then check the player stats, and then we'll simulate one more month to the deadline, and we'll see how our, um, players are doing, or, We'll check the trading block and stuff like that. As you can see, also our AHL club is playing very well. They have pretty much an identical record to ours as we're 16-5 and 2. They're 14-6 and 2. Or 14-6 and 1, my bad. Um, so yeah, very similar records, which is good. So Alexis Gravel down there is going to be definitely playing very well. Um, hopefully he wins like best goalie of the year or something. Or he wins like a Calder Cup with Utica at the end of his in his last season down there so because he's only an 80 overall currently he probably will grow during the middle of the season like he'll probably go up to an 82 i'd assume um and yeah next season he'll be in the nhl probably so we're also gonna make a move with vasilevsky probably during the off season um let's go to the united states i guess um so yeah, basically that's what we're gonna have to do. Cause Vasilevsky, he's older, but I don't know if I don't know. Do you guys think we should keep Demko, or do you think we should trade Demko, or do you think we should keep Vasilevsky or trade Vasilevsky? Cause to be honest, Vasilevsky's been the better of the two in the last few seasons, and Demko's not growing at all. He's younger, but I don't know if he has more trade value or what. And then Alexis Gravel's just obviously gonna be a stud when he gets to the NHL, hopefully. So. And our record is falling down to earth a bit. We're 20-11-6 and six now. Um, not a greatest start, but our HL team seems to be continuing with that same uh, pace as ours. Is there 20-11-2 and two as well. So hmm. It's kind of interesting that both of our teams are simulating almost the exact same. Oh, and also, it's a, a little weird coincidence because I was checking the uh, who won the Stanley Cup in the first season that we did this GM mode. And it turns out it was the National Predators against the Ottawa Senators, um, which could still potentially happen if the Sens win Game 7 in Pittsburgh, then it will actually happen. So, But hopefully it's vice versa, my Sens win the Stanley Cup and not the Predators. Even though it's cool for the Predators because the first time they've ever been in the Stanley Cup Finals. So, And we got our first injury in quite a while. So Jakob Vran has been injured with a sprained ankle till January 28th. I don't think that's that long because we're near the end of Jan uh, January. So I guess we'll just move Owen Tippett up. He's got decent offensive stats. So are really good shooting categories, I should say more. Okay, scratch players. Well, I guess we could just put Chandler Stevenson in that spot. Like Chandler Stevenson will be for right wing and center wise uh, injuries. And then um, Reed Boucher would be if we have any left winger injuries. So. Uh, there you go. Stevenson was just a free agent signing as well, just for some depth, because 
to have a good hockey team, you have to have always some good depth players to fill in if we need to, because if there's any injuries and stuff like that, and Brandon is already back, so Stevenson barely got the play. I wonder if he put up any points, and he already got a, a goal on one shot. Wow. Two games played, he only has one shot on goal, and it was a power play goal. <laughs> oh, geez, yeah, that makes sense, I guess, because I guess he did replace, like, right on the line where uh, or the power play line where Verano was, so he comes in and scores a power play goal. That's kind of interesting. It's good to have good depth players like him. Even though he's only like an 80 overall, well, I don't know if it was because of morale, but. Okay. We do have a lot of losses in rig or overtime slash shootout. Seven overtime slash shootout losses, so. Hopefully during the playoffs, if we go there, which more likely we will, hopefully we don't all of a sudden just like lose a bunch of overtime games and then get like swept or something. So we kind of fell down a bit, but Arizona is now taking over the lead in our division by eight points. So Arizona is probably going to take the division because I don't know if we're going to come back from that. So um, let's just check our player stats updated and then we'll sim another month and check the trading block. So after whatever many months this has been, let's start by forwards. So Bo Horvat leads the way for forwards with 38 points. Um, followed by Kane, the 32, Fiala, 31, Nolan Patrick with 31, Jake Vertanen with 28, um, Verana's got 22, Chris Wyman's got 21, so he might break his, or he might actually tie it, like he seems to put up the exact same number every single season, like when he was down in the AHL, 9 goals, 22 assists, then his first NHL season, 9 goals, 22 assists, and now he might be, like he needs only 3 more goals, and um, seven more assists like if he does that then he has the exact same point totals as he has always put up which is kind of weird um i don't know why he simulates like that but whatever um anthony mantha only 19 points see like with anthony mantha he scores a lot of goals because he's got like the tied for the most goals on the team however he's on like the third or fourth line and he's making like 2.5 mil he's only got one year left so we might be able to release him uh, Zach Sanford's got 17 points. He's also making a bit of coin, 3.485. So I don't know if we want to keep him around. Um, I know he was part of that Greenland deal, but he's just pretty much an extra because I think uh, Vran is more of the player I wanted. So um, Cole Castle, 17 points. Birchie, 13 points. Owen Tibbetts got 12. And Stevenson's got his one point in two games. Then let's go to defense. Let's see. So Roman Yossi, 38 points, still continuing to lead the way. Glad we signed this guy. Um, he hasn't dropped off at all yet. So, And he's simulating pretty good. 12 goals, 26 assists, 38 points in 48 games. And he's a plus 29. So he might actually be leading in plus minus in the league. Or you will leave you who is the plus 33. So uh, Stetcher's got 25. Lozgren's got 23. You will leave you's got 21. I don't know why he's not simulating that well. Um, Shea Theodore has got 12, and Breeze Ball has got 3 goals now, so he finally started to get some points, but he's a minus 1, and Stetcher is a minus 2, so I don't know if it's a 4-on-4 four four line that's like that, or what, but, and then, let's see, goalies, okay, so both of them have, like, identical records almost, and except for Vasilevsky, he's got a way better goals against average, and a better save percentage too, so, Anyways, that's that. Let's simulate another month to the trade deadline. I'm not going to check the team stats just yet because I just want to get this season kind of closer to being done. It's basically next episode, like I said, trade deadline, simulate the rest of the season, um, do kind of a wrap up of the season, and then uh, like look at who we have to play against in the first round of the playoffs because more than likely we are going to be in the playoffs. So we got a trade offer. I know, thank you. I don't want Jordan Everly. Jordan Blay is probably like 35 by now, so it's pointless to trade for somebody like him. Okay, game against the Oilers, and we lose again, so we've lost three in a row now, it looks like, unless we've lost more in the month before, but I still think we'll be probably making the playoffs, because after going to the conference finals last year, you think we would... Um, and our HL team still continuing to have the similar record like our NHL team, and I do not want to trade 
for Jordan and Imperley, I don't want to trade any prospects. It's so annoying. But Mikhail Abilene will also be joining the NHL club next season, so. And Jake Vertanen has been injured with a sprained ankle, so I'll go edit the lines and see you guys back in a sec. Okay guys, so we're back from his injury, and Ed kind of quick simmed a game already, so 3 nothing win over the Ducks, which is nice. Just one more, or well, two more we weeks pretty much to be able to simulate another trade off for Patrick and Shaw for Vasilevsky in a first. Well, that's kind of interesting, but both those guys have one year left as well. Like, they'd definitely help a cup run, but then I'd have to call up Alexis Gravel. That's kind of an interesting offer. Pacioretty, though, he's 33. He'd probably retire at the end of the season, well, close to the season. And Shaw, it's not too horrible, but look at that. Andrew Shaw is a minus 30, and Pacioretty is a plus 11. So I don't know if Montreal's even in the playoffs. No, they're not. Look at that record 20, 31, and 4. But they're listed as a contender, which is kind of weird. Huh. Okay. And we're listed still as a champion, which is good. Okay, so let's continue with the simulation. We won against Arizona, who was the team that was ahead of us, 7-6. to six. Big offensive game, and we got an offer of Ryan Hartman. How old is Ryan Hartman now? I don't want to trade to Ray Sparks, kind of, though, and Schneider, though, because both those guys are decent prospects. So, uh, Ryan Hartman's only 27. Eh, I don't know if I want to bring Ryan Hartman, to be honest, because I don't have any room for him really on the team, because... Considering that we'd be giving up prospects, we'd have to get rid of like somebody on the right wing or on the left wing in our forward course. So. And more trade offers. No, I'm not trading for Eberle. Oh, we've won four of our last five. Make that five of our last six. Logan Kutcher. No, thank you. He's old as well. And we're almost up here at the deadline, decline, we're definitely playing a lot better in this month than last month, and oh no, that's not good, so Thatcher Demko has been injured with a mild concussion, his estimated return is March 14th, which is like in two weeks, which means you know who we have to call up guys, and that is obviously the little man or whatever he is, I don't think he's little actually, 6'4 or something. 6-3, yeah, so Alexis Gravel is going to have to come up to the NHL. Um, he doesn't go through waivers, correct? Just making sure. Okay, good. Because I don't want him to be getting claimed when I send him down or something. So Alexis Gravel coming back up to the NHL club. He did play one game, I think it was last season or something, while somebody was injured. But now he gets to play in replace of Thatcher Demko. So... The only thing I don't like about Alexis Gravel is his puck control is really not that good. His three stars currently. And as you can see, he has like a 67 overall poke check and he's not really that poised. Got bad passing. So hopefully those stats grow when he's in the NHL. So um, let's see. And then in the AHL, I guess we have somebody still. I oh, assure yeah, this 51 overall goalie. Hopefully the HL team can continue playing well with Chris and Hal Jenko as the starter. How is Hal Jenko even played down there? 12 and 9, 204 goals against average and a 928 save percentage. And he's got five shutouts as the backup goalie, which is kind of interesting. Um, wait, how did Alexis Gravel play down there in the minors too? He probably played pretty well, I would assume. Um, so he played 22 and 11 in a 2.42, 918. Only three shadows in comparison, so not as good, but whatever. And as you can see, he's played one game, and he didn't play the best 3.05 goals against average. 897 save percentage, but he probably will be great once he gets into the NHL uh, next season. So, Okay, let's continue simulating those two games, and Drake Vertanen is back ready from injury, so... That means Chandler Stevenson, you could get out of the lineup. Did you put up any more points? What the hell? One goal, five assists? You, you gotta be joking. He's got six points in ten games, this guy. As a depth player, that's insane. Well, I guess he's just been... It's because he's been getting the ice time of the players that have been getting injured. Like, I haven't actually put different players in those slots. Like, I've been just putting him in all the slots. So, 
He's been basically getting power play time and stuff like that, but that's still pretty good for an 80-something overall. Um, and Owen Tibbet has grown to an 83, I believe. So that is good as well. Um, yeah, let's continue with those last two games before the deadline. And then we'll check the trading block. And no thank you. Let's see. Last game is going to be... Um, we got Radico Gudis offer. No thank you. And it's a loss to the Suns. So our record up at the deadline is 34-21-7. And the AHL teams is 34-19-3. and three. So very similar records between the two of us. Um, let's take a look first at our player stats and the team stats. And then we'll go to the trading block. So looks like we didn't put up much more points than that after that. So leading the way in forwards, we have Bo Horvat with 49 points in 62 games, followed by Nolan Patrick with 40 points, um, Evander Kane 39, Fiala 39, so on like this, kind of drops off after a while, Chris Wyman's at 25 points, so he actually might get to that 31 points again, which is kind of weird. Um, and as you can see, Chandler Stevenson, 6 points in 10 games, he was a plus 4 as well, it's kind of interesting. And let's see, defense, I not goalies, I don't want to, uh, let's check goalies. So, Cravel played one game, or 15 minutes, 34 minutes of one game, I guess he came in in relief of Vasilevsky, but he made 15 saves and did not allow a single goal, so that is good for him. Um, Vasilevsky's still playing better than Demko in a sense, but, well, for goals against and not, uh, save percentage, but Demko's turning around, he's got a good save percentage, and his goals against, I believe, is dropping. His record is really nice, 21-12-3. and three. So, that is that. Um, now let's check defense, because that's what I was going to go to originally. So, Roman Yossi still leading away, obviously, with 43 points now. Um, then Stetcher, 33. Lilzegren, 28. Yuli, 25 now, so he's starting to get more points. Uh, Shea Theodore, 17 points, and then Guillaume Brisebois has got four goals. So that is that. Um, yeah, we'll check the HL afterwards, I think. Let's just check the team stats. So Arizona is still ahead of us in our division, which is fine. Mm, let's see. So leader in goals for per game on average, actually, is the New York Islanders from our old GMO, they probably still have like Dal Coley and stuff like that. We're kind of like in the middle with 2.9 goals per game. Um, our goals against is actually one of the best. It's fourth behind Arizona, St. Louis, and Nashville. So it's pretty nice. Um, power play might be one of the best too. Yep, power play is decent. It's in the top 10. Um, the best power play is the Calgary Flames currently. Um, I think they had that a couple seasons ago as well. And then our penalty kill is one of the worst, actually. 77.7%. So, say what you want of uh, 7 being a lucky number, 777. I don't know if I like that penalty kill at all. We might have to change that up a bit. Um, you guys can let me know what you want me to do with the penalty kill. Um, our home record is 18, 9, and 4. But on the road, we're kind of shit as we're 16, 12, and 3. But we're 7 3 0 in our last 10, so that's our team stats. Um, I guess we could quickly gloss over the AHL stats and then we'll get to the um, trading blocks. So, Mikhail Albolin, 50 points in 56 games, and he's in 83 now. So, guys, do I call this dude up and uh, send down or trade away somebody, like whoever our fourth line center is? Because Mikhail Elbling's currently NHL ready and he's playing in the AHL so like he started the season off as like a 70 some 78 or 79 so he's growing a lot and he's still on his minor league deal he was our third overall pick back in 2020 so I think we might want to call him up and trade away somebody and then Balser's got 49 so on like that anybody else that wait how's Bitten is he growing he's an 81 now too so Bitten might be NHL bound next season as well, so we might have to make some big moves during the offseason. Um, so yeah, that's very nice to see, though, that Albaline's up to an 83. Um, 
Let's see. What's his individual stats? So he's got great puck skills. Pretty good shooting and stuff. His wrist shot accuracy is not that good. Um, skating is really good. His senses are really good. He's got 89 offensive awareness. His defensive stats are not the greatest, but like he's got good shot blocking and okay stick checking. And then his physical is not the greatest either. Uh, he is still body check though with an 81. Um, is this his first season? Yeah, this is his first AHL season down there, and now he's jumped up to 83. So. He's going to be in the NHL after one year in the minors, which is pretty nice. So, that's that. Let's check the trading block quickly before I get carried away with that stuff. So, uh, do, do, do. Trade and improve. And trading block. Browse trading block. So, let's see if there's anything available. You guys can let me know in the comments. So, Ryan Kessler, Ben Bishop. Bergeron, Subin, and Kudobin. A lot of goaltending players, it seems like. Um, Ennis, Hornquist, um, Dedu, Yarmelson, and Hartman, Milson, uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand. I don't know why he's overall solo. Maybe because of ice time. I don't know. Wolski, Pouillot, Yandel, Eberle, and McCaution, MacArthur, Carter, and Nestor Sill. Hansen and Raffle, Brower and DeHarnay, uh, Blake Como, Redenbach, Radulov and Halak, Draft Picks, Drew and Neuverth, Flurry and Hayes, Bodker and Kutcher and Hillwicka, Steos, Erickson again, <laughs> um, Oliver, Crowder, and some picks so if you guys see anything that's available that you want me to trade for or do you think we should call up elbowing to the nhl or just let him play the rest of the season down there in the minors um anyways that's going to do it for this episode so thank you guys for watching see you guys next time